nine-time Pro Bowler. Former Super Bowl champion Russell Wilson planning to sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He will sign a team-friendly one-year deal with the Denver Broncos will end up paying the $38 million of the salary. Now they got Justin Fields for a conditional 2025 sixth-round pick. That is nothing. The Ravens free agent linebacker Patrick Queen told Swaggy that he plans to sign a three-year $41 million contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers. So I'm looking at the Steelers, and the question mark about the Steelers was your quarterback play. 13 interceptions is the most he has thrown in any season in his career, and he only did that once. You know, you guys, I'm just going to jump straight into the Pittsburgh Steelers at this point because uh, this team, man, has already started to make a ton of moves this offseason, and they're already starting to look like a completely different team. I mean, not only have they made moves to the offense and the offensive coaching staff so far to make this team have a chance to be a decent offense next season, but at the same time, they've also added to a defense that was already a really solid defense last year, so I think we'll see them be even better in next season as well. But what's so crazy about all of this to me is that we haven't even hit the draft yet and on top of that I don't think the Pittsburgh Steelers are quite done yet at making moves so I would be paying really really close attention but before we get into why I believe that if you like Pittsburgh Steelers content just like this make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Pittsburgh Steelers videos for the remainder of the offseason Okay, so to get back on topic with the Pittsburgh Steelers, this team, of course, is coming off a season where they went through multiple different quarterbacks throughout the year, but still found a way to finish the season 10-7 and and make the playoffs and even have a chance at winning a playoff game against the Bills that no one really gave them a chance to win. So this not only shows me how good of a coach Mike Tomlin truly is, but this also shows me how talented this roster really is. I just thought they needed to make a few moves this offseason and a few changes here and there to really get the full potential out of what they currently have and I think they've done just that so far. Of course, when it comes to the offense, the Steelers have brought in both Justin Fields and Russell Wilson, which means they're probably going to have some type of quarterback battle for the starting position. Now, I know reports have came out saying that Russell Wilson is going to be the week one starter, but I'm just going to tell you right now, if Justin Fields is the better quarterback in training camp, I have no doubt in my mind that Mike Tomlin will go with him instead, and I wouldn't mind that decision at all. I mean, either route they go, I think they're going to be getting an upgrade from what they had last year, because Russell Wilson is coming off a pretty solid season with all things considered and then Justin Fields is also coming off the best season of his entire career so I'm pretty positive you're going to be getting a big time upgrade but while the quarterback is obviously the most important position on the entire football field you can't forget about the pieces around him that help him perform well and I think the Steelers have a pretty good shot at building a pretty good supporting cast with all things considered firstly of course you're still going to have that guy George Pickens to be your receiver number one and I think he showed that he can be a pretty good guy in that role as long as you give him the targets to do so. He's a guy that not only can get crazy yardage after the catch, but also a guy that you can literally just throw a go ball up to, and he's going to find a way to come down with it, which is exactly what you ask a number one receiver to be able to do. And then on top of that, you're going to have a guy that you just went out and signed in Quez Watkins to pair with George Pickens, who is one of the fastest receivers in the league right now. I know he hasn't had a ton of production, mainly due to him being behind one of the best receiver duos in the entire league, but I promise you this guy does have a lot of potential. He just needs a chance to show it. I don't think he's going to come in and completely change how the offense runs, but I do think he's a guy that can come in and make a few plays here and there to help out whoever the starting quarterback ends up being. And then of course you have Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin to go with those first two guys that I named that are guys that I honestly don't hate too much. They're nothing crazy special, but they are guys that you can trust to throw the ball to when need be. But while I do like some of the pieces they have at the receiver position, I do think it would be smart to go out and add another piece to it. And I think we're about to see that happen either through a trade or in the draft. In the draft, you're sitting at a pretty good position at pick number 20 because you're going to either be able to get a guy like A.D. Mitchell from Texas or a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU that are both really big targets that are also really, really fast and performed well at the combine. I think adding either one of those guys at pick number 20 would be an amazing pick, but I also think we could see them go another route and try to make a trade for an already proven guy. And from the thumbnail of this video, you can probably guess that I'm talking about trading for that guy, Brandon. 
Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk is coming off the best season of his career by far, almost putting up 1,500 yards receiving, which is pretty insane. But despite all of that good production, I still feel like he's one of the more underrated guys in the league right now. I feel like he doesn't get talked about as much as he should, and I think if the Steelers did find a way to go trade for him, he would be a perfect fit to pair with what they have in George Pickens. You get one of the best route runners in the league on one side, and you get one of the best contested catch guys on the other side, and then you can mix in guys like Quez Watkins and Calvin Austin to add some speed in the mix. This would make me so much more confident in the Steelers offense, especially considering you're still going to have Pat Fryermuth at the tight end position, who has already proved himself to be a pretty solid blocker and a pretty solid receiving threat as well. So as long as you add something, whether it's through the draft or through a trade, I think we're going to see this offense be just fine, especially when you take into consideration you're going to be getting back your running back duo who really, really turned it on down the stretch. Najee Harris has gotten so much hate throughout his career so far due to him being a first round draft pick, but I think he really started to show up towards the end of the season this past year, and he was the perfect power back to go with a speedy back like Jalen Warren. I mean, even with the play calling not being the greatest, these guys were able to put together really solid running performance after really solid running performance back to back to back, and when you have a running back duo that can do that, it's going to make the quarterback's life so much easier, and on top of that, it's going to make the receivers be able to get open a lot easier, which just makes the offense run so much smoother. Arthur Smith, as you all know, is a coach that gets hated on a ton for what he did last year in Atlanta, but I don't think people understand how good of a coordinator he was before Atlanta when he had a guy like Derrick Henry. He's one of the smartest coaches in the game at building a really complex run game, and I think that's exactly how the Pittsburgh Steelers want to play offensive football. They want to work slow and steady and move the offense down the field bit by bit, which will give their defense more time to rest, which is the main unit this team wants to focus on. Speaking of the defense though, like I just said, they're the unit that this team focuses on the most, and I think we're going to see this defense really show out in the upcoming season. I mean, to start pretty simply, you have TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith on both edges, and regardless of everything else on the team, that's going to make the defense at least a little bit decent. They're always going to find a way to get after the passer on an extremely, extremely consistent basis, and getting after the passer is probably the most important thing a defense can do. And on top of that, you have guys like Keanu Benton, who played really well in his rookie season on the interior. And you'll still have, of course, the older guy, Cam Hayward, who still plays at a really high level whenever he's not injured. This makes up easily one of the more talented D-lines in the entire league, if I had to say so myself. And then on top of that, you added something behind them that I really, really like. The Steelers went out and signed a division rival from the Ravens and Patrick Queen to help sure up the linebacker core and sure up the overall front seven a little bit. The Steelers, as we all know, were pretty short-handed on linebackers last year, especially when they started dealing with injuries. So to bring in Patrick Queen is a perfect move in my opinion, and it really does pair well with a guy like Cole Holicombe, who I think played pretty good football before he went down with his season-ending injury. So you're going to have those two guys, and you're also going to have a Landon Roberts, who I think played pretty good football as well last year, which makes up a really, really good linebacker group with Patrick Queen leading the charge. And then finally, to move to the back end of everything, you got Joey Porter Jr., who had an amazing rookie season, who I think is going to break out in year two. You have Dante Jackson to pair with Joey Porter due to the trade that you made. You still have one of the best safeties, if not the very best safety in the league, and Minka Fitzpatrick coming back. And then finally, you also signed a really, really good safety into Deshaun Elliott to pair with Minka, which makes up a way better secondary than what the Steelers put on the field last year. So, I mean, man, I don't know what to tell you. This team overall is already looking like a way better team than they were in the previous season, and I think if they make one more move before the draft and then also have a good draft, this team can contend just like anyone else. But, of course, that's just my opinion, so I'm still curious to know what you guys think about this entire offseason so far down below in the comments. So let me know your thoughts on all the moves the Steelers have made so far, and with that being said, I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.